with the joy of the Holy Ghost, I'd like you to put your hands together for the Lord. As I bring up God's servant, come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Awesome God. Our God is awesome. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Have a father. You are worthy of, of our praise. To you, to you our hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. It's good for us to recognize that the Lord is in this place and He's worthy to be praised. belong to God. Honor belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of this mountain. The word of the Lord says in Obadiah chapter number one, the 17th verse, it only has one chapter. It's the shortest of all the chapters in the Old Testament. And uh, that verse 17 says, upon DLCC. There shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness. And I dominion shall have. She shall possess her possession. Is that not what the word of the Lord says? Anyone who is excited with me. You are going to read it. You are going to personalize it. That upon this mountain. That in this church. That in your family. In your household. In your working place. In your relationship. In your marriage. In the life of your children. There shall be what? Deliverance. And the grace to live a holy life shall be your portion and you shall possess your possession let's read that word together do you believe it let's read it together one more time upon mount zion We're going to say, in this place today, in this place today, in this place today, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. In this place today, my household, my family, this church, we shall possess our possession. It is done in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus.
Jesus name. Put your hands together for the Lord. Awesome God. Shall we be seated? Pastor, thank you so much for allowing me and my wife to be partakers of the blessings in dominion life. We do not take it for granted. Everything good that God is doing here, we are praying that God will do it for us also. Where people live in dominion. Where people receive the land that God has already surveyed and acquired. <laughs> awesome. He has already surveyed the land. Acquired the land. So all we need to do is receive the land. Awesome. Awesome. I congratulate Dominion Life. Some good is coming your way. By the grace of God on day number one, the Lord helped us to examine the words supernatural advancement. Especially in the areas of uh, our health, our finances, our relationships, and all the positions, work, and all the things that are necessary for our happiness, for our survival here in material uh, manners. And the second day, the Lord helped us to see why it is necessary to move into supernatural advancement in the area of the spiritual where we get to carry the glory of God wherever we go, where we are empowered to do exploit for the Lord, where wherever we uh, find ourselves, people see the glory of God in our lives. We, by faith, yesterday received the advancements from the power of the Lord God Almighty, moving us into the realms where we can heal the sick where we can speak goodness into the lives of people and it becomes their reality. Today, I would like us to look at supernatural advancement in the realm of the spirit, but one that is not temporal, one that is eternal. I will call it the mother of advancement. The best form of advancement anyone should ever dream to experience. That is the power of the Most High God to supernaturally advance us into eternal life. For what would we profit a man? To gain this world and at long last lose their soul? What would have been the profit of our coming to church? What would have been the reason? What's going to be the, the joy of our calling Lord, Lord, Lord? And at the point when it matters most for us not to make it. So I think that the best form of advancement that any one of us should uh, desire to experience is advancing from this world that is temporary into the world of eternity. And that causes us to raise the question, what is eternal life? What is eternal life? I think Apostle Paul was uh, struggling with that also in his ministry, in his life, in his heart. He was ruminating over this very important form of advancement in life. And he would say, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 
26, verse 27. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26, verse 27. Paul says, Therefore, when I think of everything that is going on in my life, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight like I am beating the air. No. I discipline my body. I make my body a slave. So that after I have preached to others. That I myself will not be disqualified. It's a big deal. After I have carried the glory of God here. After I have healed the sick. After I have preached and people have been converted. After I have shown for the glory of the Lord in the exploit that I do. I am still fighting that at the end of it all. That I will not lose my soul. Paul knew. The best advancement that one should desire. And so he sought after it. And I want us to seek after eternal life. America will go. Whatever country we come from will go. Whatever we have, they will go. Whatever we aspire to become, that will come to an end one day. But there is a realm that is called eternal. There is a place that is called eternal. There is a position that you and I can have eternally. And it is done. It is given. It is received supernaturally. We're still talking about supernatural advancement. So I'm asking that God in his mercy will supernaturally advance us from the realm of caring for the things of this world into the realm of entering into eternal peace that no one can take away from us. What is eternal life? Come with me. We're going to answer this question together. Romans chapter number 6 verse 23. We're going to answer the question together. Once the scripture is on or you, maybe you open it up where, with your Bible, we are going to answer this question together. Very simple. What is eternal life? This place that I want God to advance me into. Shall we read? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Let's read it together so it can sink. The question is raised. The answer is in this verse. Let's read it and then we're going to begin to offer the answer as we understand this verse. Let's read it together again. For the wages of sin is God. So, if you were to ask yourself, what is eternal life? Or a brethren were to ask you, or, or someone on the street were to ask you, what is eternal life? Please, God's people, let's answer. What? Okay, someone said something in addition to gift of God. What was that? Christ. Very important. Eternal life is simply the gift of God in Christ Jesus. The gift of God through Christ Jesus. I can live a healthy life here, but if I don't have eternal life, it all comes to an end. Because it says, the wages of sin is death. God has seen us. He's looking all over us and he knows that uh, naturally, we're talking about supernatural, right? 
in the natural, all we have around us is sin, which results to death. So the only thing that the natural man can expect is death. The only thing that the regular person could expect at the end of their life here is death. But God, because he loves us, he said, I don't want you to, to end your life in death. I'll give you a gift. I'll give you a gift. I'll give you a gift. The name of the gift is eternal life. I want you to live, not die. When you say eternal, that means forever. When you say life, that means living, breathing, existing. When you put the words together, it means live forever, exist forever, praise me forever, breathe forever, enjoy forever, have peace forever. God's got a better plan for you, brothers and sisters. His plan for us is that we may live forever. Awesome God. So when you are thinking advancement, yes, we will advance from poverty into surplus, into goodness, into riches, into wealth. We will advance from uh, sickness into living a good uh, health. We will advance from uh, uh, low deba, from um, uh, inconsequential to becoming someone that is celebrated. Yes, we will. As a matter of fact, in our relationship with God, we will advance from not knowing how to pray, from not knowing how to interpret the word of God uh, to the person that is becoming someone who wants Stand, someone who is praying now, someone who is leading others uh, to, to accept Jesus Christ as their eternal life with Christ Jesus. Now, if you stay in that verse, it says eternal life is God's gift through Jesus. And so, I'd like us to uh, imagine someone sending a gift they mailed the gift to us someone called the mailman gotta bring it post, post, postal service or whatever other means uh, a delivery person has to bring the gift to you but the only way you can get the gift. It's if you let the delivery man come near your door. Ain't that right? The only way I can receive the gift is if, if, if I open my door or my mailbox or something. Uh, a, a place where the delivery man can give it to me. And as soon as I let that delivery person to my, my space. Then it becomes real that I'm going to collect the gift that the sender sent. I want to see Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as that mailman. Yeah, because that scripture says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus. That gift of God that is called eternal life, you and I can only receive it through Christ Jesus. We can only find that eternal life in Christ Jesus. Outside of, the, uh, of Christ Jesus, the, the eternal life cannot be our reality. If you, your lawn is so neatly mowed, and you say no mailman can step on my grass guess what you're not going to get the package that has been sent my house is so neat so big mailman 
when you, if you got something for me, just throw it. By the time it arrives, it would have damaged, eh? The gift is in Jesus' hand. And we gotta let him know. If you will, please let us take a look at one hymn. It says, there is a stranger at the door. There is a mailman at the door. There is a delivery man at the door. I come here today to day to say, please let him in. It says there is a stranger at the door. The door. Let him in. He has been there oft before. Let him in. Let him in. He is gone. Let him in. The Holy One. Jesus Christ, the Son of Pressing your bell now. Let him in. Now, now, make him your choice. Let him in. He is standing at your door. Joy to you. In need of Jesus has it in his hand. Now at least the heavenly guest. Let him be. He will make for you a is at your door brothers and sisters Jesus Christ of Nazareth bringing you the gift of eternal life this is the day we must make up our minds and we will not let him just be out there let him in 
into your space, into your life, into your thinking, into your decision making. Let him in. He brought you gift of eternal life so that it does not all end here. What is eternal life? The gift of God. You know what's beautiful about this? Is that all of us who allow this man Jesus to come in. To deliver eternal life to us. We are the most fortunate. We are the most blessed. Why do I say that? That realm that. God is advancing us into supernaturally through his son. It's a realm where there is no more pain. Eternal life is a realm where there is no more agony. Eternal life is a realm where there is no more fighting. There is no more sibling rivalry. There is no more striving. There is no more hardship. Hey folks, you ain't got to go to work next day. Oh yeah, I received that. <laughs> Turn with me, take a look at it. Revelations chapter number 21. What is eternal life? Where is eternal life? What's in eternal life? Let's begin from the first verse. We're going to read just four verses. The first verse of Revelation chapter number 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. No matter how beautiful California is, it's going to pass away. Also, there was no more sea. Pastor was telling us yesterday about traveling from this place to Hawaii. Telling us that from here to Hawaii is the longest travel you can have upon the waters without any land. But in eternity, no more seas. Do you see the awesomeness of God again? Verse number two. Then I, John, saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. From who? From God. Prepared as a bride. Adorn for her husband. We are the ones prepared. The place is prepared for us. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. What is eternal life? It is the realm where God tabernacles with human beings. Where God lives with us. Where we live with God. Where we don't imagine him anymore, but we begin to behold him as he is. That's eternal life. This is the gift that God has brought to us through Christ Jesus to replace death. And he will dwell with us. And we shall be his people. God himself will be with us. And he will be our God. What does the next verse say? Hallelujah. God will wipe away all tears. That is eternal life. That's the gift that Jesus brought. You and I must let the man in into our lives. 
in the realm of eternity with Jesus Christ, there will be no more tears. The Bible says there shall be no more death. No sorrow. No crying. No pain. Because all those former things that plagued one in the physical, the things that plague one in the natural, the things that plague one, even though one is living in the beautiful city, but one is still going through ordeals of life, guess what? They will pass away. That's why I said it is the best advancement anyone should seek for. Entering into eternity where there is no more pain, no more darkness, no more sorrow, no more losing our loved ones, no more insanity, no more fear, no more fidgeting. Heart is not beating fast anymore because of some news that we heard. There, there is no bad news. 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 There is no bad feeling. There is no ill feeling. There is no trouble. That's where we should pray that God will advance us into. That's the utmost of advancements. That's the utmost of advancements. Now, John. 336. When you say eternal, you're looking at timeless time, so to say. So you can look at it as quantity, long. When you say life, you're talking about living. You see, the quality of life that we're going to be living in eternity is the life that has no, no sickness. That's quality. And it's going to be forever. Now, in St. John chapter 3, verse 36, we read, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. This is good news. Eternal life is the realm in Christ where we live in peace with God forever, where there is no more trouble. And you can say, and I would say, but how do I get it? And the Lord says, uh, just believe in Christ Jesus. Accept the mailman in. And you're soon going to find out he's not a stranger after all. He's not a mailman that you won't let into your house after all. He's not one that you will see and not, and not fall in love with. Jesus Christ delivers life. He brings you life. He brings you life. He brings you life. You want to ensure that you have accepted him and that you believe him. Whoever believes in the son has eternal life. And the other, the opposite is there. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life. They will only see death. And the wrath of God remains on that person. We will not enter into the wrath of God in Jesus' name. St. John chapter 5 verse 24. Jesus breaks it down further to help us get it. What is eternal life? It's the gift of God. How may I acquire eternal life? I believe in the deliverer, in the mailman, in the person uh, 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 that brought uh, that gift. And Jesus now explains. He said, John 5, 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me, whoever believes that I am the way, the truth, and the life, just simply believing that person has eternal life. That 
that person is not going to be judged. That, is going to, that person is going to pass from death to life. And that's the point. Advance us from death into life. If we take it a step higher, Jesus further helps us to define life. I see it in St. John's chapter 17, verse 3. So we're not struggling. What is eternal life? How do I understand it or how do I attain it? How do I enter into it? John 17, 3, Jesus would say, Now, this is eternal life. What is it? That they know you. That's eternal life. Once you know Jesus and the God has sent him, you have eternal life. You have entered into eternal life. And that makes me to dare to say that you and I can begin to enjoy eternal life even now. What is eternal life? Jesus says, this is eternal life that they know you God who sent me. And Jesus Christ who is sent. Awesome. So every one of us that seeks to know God here, we are actually seeking eternal life. As you are drawing closer to the Lord, you are entering into eternal life. He gives you the peace that no one else can give to you. The peace that passes all understanding. The peace that we are going to be spending in heaven. He gives it to you now. Troubles may be all over the place and all of, but there's Peace in you. Peace. Seek to know Jesus. As you seek to know Jesus, you enter into eternal life. He says automatically, because you know me and because you believe me, you got eternal life. This is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our sight. This is why Apostle Paul would say in Philippians chapter number 3, verse 10, verse 11, he would say that I may know him. Because Jesus already said, this is eternal life, that they know me. This is eternal life, that they know who sent me. So Paul heard that. Paul understood that. And he said, all I am seeking is that I may know him and the power that raised him from the dead. When those of us in dominion life continue to seek to know God, we are seeking eternal life. When you want to know the truth and the life, that is how to enter eternal life. And it is done by God. All by himself. He is God by himself. And he says this is the program. This is how it's going to happen. If you want to enter into that place where there is no more crying. Where there is no more dying. Where there is no more stealing. Where there is no more fighting. Where there is no more misunderstanding. Where no one is giving you trouble. Where there are no terrorists. Where nothing will terrorize you. Say, accept the mailman. Let him come into. Don't say, my lawn is too clean. Let him come in. You want a clean lawn? This mailman is going to clean your lawn for you. He does everything. He's everything. He's everything to me. He's everything. He's everything to me. He's my brother, my sister, my father, and my mother. He's everything to me. Jesus is everything. He's everything. He's everything to me. He's everything, He's everything to me. He's my healer, 
my blesser, my protector, and my shield. He's everything to me. Jesus is the male man that you cannot afford to have him stay outside. When he comes into your life, he becomes everything to you. He becomes your counselor. The Bible calls him the wonder-walking God. That he is, his name is Emmanuel. He gets to stay with you. When he brings the gift, he doesn't go back to the post office. He stays in your house. He stays in your heart. He's enough for you. And he can get into the heart of your wife too. Get into the heart of your children at the same time. And if your neighbor needed the same male man, he would be in their house too without leaving your house. Hallelujah to the lamb that was slain. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is able to be where, everywhere, doing all things. Uh, being with everybody all at the same time preserving all those he died for preserving them preparing them for the day of glory that he may present us all perfect before God all of a sudden now you got a counselor all of a sudden now you got a helper all of a sudden now you got somebody whose spirit will begin to pray inside of you all of a sudden now you got somebody who tells you i'll be with you i'll be on your side how can they harm you when i hold you near your life is in my life compare your soul i will be with you i will be with you from now till the end i'll always be with you there is no need to cry i will be with you Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if you will let him in. He doesn't go back. He stays. He enables. He energizes. He equips. He makes ready. He loves. He makes plain what is confusing. Christ of Nazareth. What is eternal life? Eternal life is the gift of God to us that removes death. Gives us life. And how do I get it? I believe in Jesus. How do I get it? I accept Jesus. How do I get eternal life? I let him come in and I let him stay. And he counsels me and mentors me and holds my hand. He said, come on, let's go. He said, come on, let's go. And if I let him hold my hand, he's also the voice in my ears. He said, I will speak to your ears. And I will say, this is the way. Walk in it. I pray that our hearts be open unto the Lord Jesus Christ today. I pray that we don't we don't see Jesus as one that we just come and just come get from him and I go back live my life in the life of flesh but Jesus as one who really loves me, who really wants to keep me, who wants me to have life that is real. Mm. If I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, my Bible tells me, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10. If I believe in my heart that, Jesus, that God actually raised him from the dead, the Bible says that I will be saved. The last scripture for today is 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, verse 12. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son God gave us eternal life 
And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So now we know that it is in Jesus that we can find the life. The life is in Jesus. Jesus is the life that we must all receive and not sell. We must not give them away. Let us rise on our feet. The best advancement you and I can seek for in life is the advancement from death, from this dying, decaying body into life eternal. If we make it into eternity, then our race in life has not been in vain. My prayer for you is that your coming to dominion life shall not be in vain. Your seeking the face of the Lord shall not be in vain. Your calling the name of Jesus shall not be in vain. I pray that there will be room in your heart big enough for Jesus Christ. That you will allow him to take over. To rule in your life.